outside the pawn shops. Nickel arcade. This is How Men Cry. How did you come up with this? Because this seems to be talking about men, sensitivity, violence, all these things. It's a theme. I've going had uncontrollable on. sobbing for the last <laughs> five years. I just thought I'd write about it. Well, um, it, it occurs to me, uh, uh, you know, the longer I live, that that men, and I, I'm certainly one of these men, yeah. have a lot to learn as far as understanding. It's not that we don't have mm -hmm. feelings, but mm. we just don't understand what they are. Mm -hmm. We don't understand what that feeling is, and we can't, we don't know what they are when we're having them. You don't, you don't. So no. we should be nicer. It's, w well, what yeah. it is, I think, is that little boys are taught n to, to, not to, to push that back mm -hmm. into, in, you know, to the bottom of the pile, and uh, women aren't. Mm -hmm. And I think women are way ahead of the game. Because they, because they, uh, I, I find women to be more communicative, more open. Mm -hmm. We are. You are. Mm -hmm. You are. And and you know what? Um, the, it, entering the new millennium, mm -hmm. it's it's all about communication, it isn't is. it? And mm -hmm. men are kind. You got of, a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> but what do you think about this? I mean, this whole. Taking in what you just said, which is certainly proof that this is on men's minds. I don't think women really realized what was roar this has really been driving men crazy. We have Susan Faludi's book, Stiffed, which is getting a lot of attention. Yeah. And we have the movie Fight Club, yeah. which is this whole kind of, you know, the violence coming back in it, that men lost something, they have to find themselves. Well, I think that men also are feeling that, that women are trying to feminize them. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that's really, no, really what's happening. I think w what is happening is that men, are, in the information age, are out of touch with what we need to m make the next leap. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Into the next because everything next has century. changed. Do you notice in your life things have Absolutely. changed? Absolutely. You know, my I, I, I was thinking about my grandfather. My grandfather mm -hmm. um, never saw his kids. You know, he worked seven days a week. He worked 14 hours a day. He had a job he hated most of his life to put food on the table. Yeah. And this is what men have had to do all, you know, throughout yes. for the many hundreds of years. But it was, maybe this whole discussion, though, is that it was, they knew what they had to do. They knew what they had to they do. They had to do that. But they couldn't have an emotional life no. and do that. No. So they pushed it down. And now there are choices. Mm -hmm. Men can do other things now. Men can do work at things they like. But I guess the problem. Or they is could choose not to work, and women can work. But but, do you think men are in a crisis? That's what they say. Because you don't know. We you know that people knew that they went to work and they stayed with their wives and they they had kids and they taught their kids well, how I to think defend some themselves. Men are in, some men are in a crisis, but mm. I think we're we're in a, a period of upheaval. I think we're going through a revolution in, in a way, a quiet Gender revolution, revolution. That, that we're not. I mean, women have it's been going on for a while, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think men are beginning to go, hey, you know, the, something isn't quite right. Do you have here. an enemy, though? We had an enemy. It was you. <laughs> well, you were but the you know oppressor. We, we, but we, we weren't your enemy. No. We weren't your enemy. No. We were, it, it's just that we weren't taught to do the right things as kids. And, and it was the, maybe it was the Industrial Revolution that was the enemy more than anything else. Mm -hmm. It made men into things that men, even men didn't want to be, but we didn't know. But now the technological revolution has created a level playing field. Hey, That's we're solving right. all the world's we're problems absolutely. here, aren't we? We absolutely. are. So it doesn't matter. As soon as, we, as, soon as, <laughs> as soon as we can teach women to back up and park, everything's going to be... Uh, <laughs> they mean back, oh, back up and park. Ba back yeah. into parking They're getting spaces. Better it's it. going to be an unbelievable world. <laughs> but they're never going to get the clicker right. I have no <laughs> desire to get the clicker right. I will never ever I won't even work at it <laughs> I there's, can't even get the there's no right. way but that whole theme though do you think business-wise in the music industry we can also look at it there I mean look at how things are changed men used to run the universe they certainly used to be yeah. you know in charge of the whole music industry exactly and and, and now uh, look and you know uh, if you think women really hear differently and, and 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 think of music differently and I think women are much better at running music companies than men. Do you think so? I think so. Because I, they know what they, pushes people's buttons. Well, I, I, th I, yeah. I think they just listen harder than men do. Mm -hmm. men, uh, men tend to be 
more into sort of abstract, sort of architectural things in yeah, the music they business. Do. Women just they say, try to think about all the elements. Me, I, that yeah. touches me, and so it'll touch somebody else, and that's what makes a great song or who, a great record. Who did you listen to in high school? Who did you kid? listen to? Rod Stewart. Yeah, I listened to sh sure. I listened to Rod Stewart. Stones, I listened to Beatles. the Beatles and the Stones, and I listened to Bob Dylan, and I listened to uh, um, uh, Miles Davis, and I listened to Billie Holiday, mm. and, and uh, all the requisite. Sarah Vaughan. Do they still influence you? Do you go back to stuff like that? Yeah. In fact, I've learned a lot more from women singers than men singers. Really? Yeah. I think women. The are same thing singers. that they kind of. What do you mean? Well, I don't, I don't. I can't really analyze it, but I mean, when I think of all the singers that I really love, they tend to be women. That's odd, considering you write for. Well, I think they're more. Um, they communicate more vocally than men do. Yeah, it's the same thing because we're in touch with our feelings. You see. Yeah. And we know the good what we ones want to do. Say. But you there do. are lots of women that just sing words, but and yeah. lots of men that sing words. But women, I, I, I think, tend to get emo more emotionally involved in a song. That do you work with your wife musically? Um, not a lot. Yeah. You know, we uh, because uh, we, we we try to keep s something separate in our life. We're mm -hmm. you know we both work at home. Yeah, and I we think both she have said the that. Kids and yeah. We do a little bit. Would... I run things by her, and she runs things by me. If I get stuck on a lyric, sometimes mm -hmm. I, or a melody, I get an idea from her, and then I do the exact opposite. <laughs> There you go, because you're still a man and you're That's not right. through the journey yeah, exactly. yet. Now, you used to live in L.A. You're back here. Yep. Why? We always want to know. Canadians always want to know yeah, well, about the trip down yeah. and then the trip back. Well, when I left Canada, you almost had to leave Canada. Why? But what do you mean? Because a lot of the record companies at that time were just, they really didn't, it, well, two things. It was hard for a Canadian to get on Canadian radio. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for record companies to promote Canadian mm -hmm. artists. Therefore, they didn't want to sign them. Mm -hmm. and it was also hard, once you signed a Canadian artist, to get them released in the States. So... You had to be down there. Yeah, you had to be down there. And, and it, so I, you know, my, uh, I had a wonderful manager, Bernie Schaefer, in those days, and he believed in the stuff I was doing, and he went down to L.A. and got me a deal. And um, so I, uh, that was 77, I, I did a couple of records for Warner Brothers, and, and then I moved down there full time. I, I was commuting mm -hmm. for three years, and I moved. Why, why come home? Is it different now? You're, is it different? They tell us it's a different musical landscape It is here. a mu different musical mm -hmm. landscape, but I would have come home anyway, because mm -hmm. um, I never felt, although I was actually born in the States, I never mm -hmm. felt like an American. I grew up in Canada. I mm -hmm. feel, feel like a Canadian. I just felt better here. I mm -hmm. knew how to be, when we had children, I knew how to be a dad in Toronto. I didn't know how to be a dad in yeah, LA. I, I understand know what to do that. with my kids. Yeah, it just becomes, it's great, but I guess your home is always your home. Yeah, and absolutely. You can't get and, rid of and, it. Uh, and now, you know, the music business, like, like the rubber business mm -hmm. or Whatever the steel business is all international now, yeah. And so you can't. Uh, you can be anywhere. You can kind of be anywhere. It's, you know what? I probably have more opportunities if I was living in L.A. still, but a little more maybe. But the personal rewards wouldn't be there. That's right. Quality of my life is one of my 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 son Ezra goes to the same school, public school I went to. Oh. You know. Yeah. My daughter, uh, you know, is is going to. A school to a school on the, you know, in the same neighborhood. Yeah. It's just uh, amazing. The old life repeats itself yeah. and all those things that your parents talk about. Circles and feathers yeah. and closure. <laughs> that and all you weren't interested things. in and now you are. Anyway, congratulations. Thank Thanks, you Arlene. so much. It was great You're to have wonderful. you. Appreciate it. We've been speaking with Mark Jordan. His new CD, once again, is called This Is How Men Cry.